polar berry here. Thumbs up, ding a bell, subscribe. This is a QA and a vlog. Uh, I did a call out on Insta asking what you wanted answers to. As always, this is um, actually the second one we've done. So as always, nothing's off limits. So the first um, question was, um, I want to get into yoga, but I hate it. Okay, so, and I've tried a few times and feel like, um, this girl was like, I feel like every time I go to a class, like I can't do it right, I always need extra help. First of all, don't be afraid of being a dingo at the beginning. I have written on one of my yoga mats, um, not this one, this is a beautiful cork one that I was given, thank you. Um, but I have written on one of my yoga mats, you've got to show up and suck before you can show up and shine. So basically you have to be okay with being crap at the start before you get really good. I still can't do a handstand. And because I've broken my ribs, I'm not even good at back bends anymore. So be okay with not being great at it. That's a really good place to start. And then anything else becomes a bonus. Like when you can do cool little arm balances, you're like, what? I've got a party trick now. But go in with no expectation and then it will start to come. The moment you attach something to it and you're like, I have to do this. For me, for ages, I was like, I have to do a drop back. I have to be able to go from standing into wheel. And at the moment, that's reasonably impossible with the um, broken rib. So I guess what I'm trying to say is be okay with being crap to start with. Second of all, go to the back of the class, tell the teacher you're a beginner, do a beginner's class, get all the props, use the bolsters, use the blocks, use the straps. Don't be afraid to be a beginner. So many people go in, go up the front, think they're like God's gifts to yoga world and injure themselves or don't do it right. There's a lot of misalignment. Um, and I think like, just like go at your own pace, do it also because it feels good. Like if you don't like it and you'd like, oh, the thought of being in yoga class makes you feel gross. You, didn't, you haven't found your studio yet. So try a few on, because there's great classes out there. There's crappy ones out there as well. Like sometimes I've sat in classes and been like, this isn't for me. I've, on the flip side, I've been a teacher that's had students walk out of my classes before and said that it feels more like a nightclub in here, you know, so try it on. If, if it's not fitting at one studio, try on a different studio. Um, you'll find there's a big difference between a male teacher and a female teacher as well, often in their like, fieriness and the way in which they teach. So like try things on, you might want more mellow, you want, might want a bit more like pitter, a bit more fire. So just give them a try. We're so lucky here in Australia and actually like in a lot of places, but there's some great yogs out there. You just gotta keep trying it on and trusting. And if you wanna get into it, you will eventually get into it. Otherwise, just watch these vlogs and do it at home. Put some tunes on. Um, second question, how do you balance hormones? I mean, that's like opening Pandora's box there. It's a really big one. Um, I know personally, if I feel out of whack, um, magnesium and zinc are two things that I go to because they are literally the traffic controls of your body. We need magnesium, not just for hormones, but and neurochemistry, you know, for Krebs cycle and making energy and same with zinc. It's a key player. Sorry, I was like, need to swallow then. But it was a, it's a key play, player in so many things. So I think if you're not sure about your hormones, my number one thing would be get to a health practitioner. I see a naturopath, an acupuncturist, a functional doctor. I literally had eight vials of blood taken the other day because I was sure I had a hormone imbalance. Turns out I didn't. Turns out I had a methylation homocysteine thing. I am I'm talking another language, but what I'm getting at is you might think there's an underlying hormone imbalance or thyroid imbalance, but in actual fact, it might be quite the opposite. You, know, you could be self-medicating for no reason. So my advice would be definitely get to a practitioner and there's so many fantastic practitioners that are out there. You'll be able to find the right fit for you. Um, you seem really happy at the moment. What's your trick? <laughs> um, my trick with happiness um, is do what you love, be kind, be real, and kind of actually love who you are. I think um, when we're caught up in worrying about what other people think of us and um, we get caught up in experiences where we've been hurt in the past, I know we've all been hurt in the past, we've all had crappy breakups or shit stuff happened when we were kids. Um, and rather than looking at them like, oh man, I had to go through that really bad thing and Oh, I went through that really rough breakup and letting that define you. Why can't it be like, okay, this thing happened. How cool that I could learn this lesson from it. How cool that I can now learn 
to see those red flags at the beginning of a relationship or that I, um, you know, won't put myself in a situation where I need to learn those things. So I think the way that I look at the uncomfortable stuff now is like, whoa, I'm actually so grateful that I am healthy and here now and doing what I love and being around people that make me happy. My mantra is like, work hard, be kind, live from the heart, be real, and just like do what you love because life is way too fucking short. Sorry, my dad's going to kill me. He hates when I swear, but like it really is. So it's too short to not live the way that you want to live. you got to do what you love. You've got to be real. You've got to be happy, and to be happy is to live that way unapologetically, like live what is true for you. And then you meet great people, and then you date the awesome people, and then everything is awesome. But when you're kind of like trapped in this kind of like rat race of kind of chasing your tail or trying to make someone else happy, it's going to be clunky and it's going to feel like resistance. You want flow. In in yoga, there's a, you know, when you, and in psychology, there's a word called flow and it's when you're living your purpose and your time stops. And when time stops, it's a really good sign that you're on the right track with something. So even if you don't know what your goals or purpose is, or in yoga, we call it your dharma, um, don't sweat it because just find those moments where time stops for you. It might just be being around a certain person or being out in nature. The truth of the matter is, really awesome, real hearts are rare, but when you're around them, it feels so great. More of that, keep that stuff. And the other stuff that, that hurts or takes from you or the vampire people, sayonara, mate. <laughs> Bye, Felicia, no time for that, yeah? So put you first. Love yourself. That was a very long-winded answer. Um, you always do infrared saunas and hyperbaric chambers. What are the benefits of them? Okay, so I do infrared sauna um, actually at Odos in Armadale. And infrared sauna is different to a regular sauna. It's actually not as hot. It's just about 60 degrees. Um, at Odos, they have far, mid, and near infrared. Um, basically, it works on detoxif detoxifying the body. I know the near is specific for skin. Um, there's ones for immune. You can kind of like set up your program. I like it because I love heat, and so I, I really enjoy sweating. I believe that it does work on detoxification. I notice that um, my skin is a lot clearer when I do it. I'm like that girl that'll get eczema around her eyes when she's stressed out. So I've just found the sauna's great. Hyperbaric chamber, I've found a great stress relief. Um, so that's where the pressure's changed either up or down by four. Um, a lot of people get scared to go into a hyperbaric chamber. It's a mild one, mind you, um, because you're literally like, an, it's like very spaceshipy and you're locked in a chamber for an hour, but it's amazing. I really love it. Um, it's meant to be great for wound recovery, healing. I personally use it a lot when I fly. So on either end of a flight, I'll get in there and just realign myself and get myself sorted. And I love doing the double where I'll do a oxygen therapy, hyperbaric, and then I'll go into a sauna after. It's like, it feels like a very indulgent health day when I can do that. But I love them both. And I go to Odos in Armadale. How do I get my iron levels up? Of course, red meat is like one way to do it. Oyster is another way to do it. But you know, you can do it with leafy greens as well. Um, there's a really great vegan iron supplement. I think it's called Flor Floridix, and it's like all herbs, because herbs are really high in iron as well. You can do it with herbal medicine. But again, go to the doctor, get the test done, see your naturopath, try not to self-prescribe. Um, when I lived on the Gold Coast and worked at Mrs. Flannery's, um, often we'd give, we had a lot of vegans visit us, and we'd give them molasses, blackstrap molasses, because it's really high in B, specifically B12, and iron, and it's a vegan source. That's another one. You can just like, it tastes like maple syrup mixed with like Marmite or Vegemite, it's real weird. But you can just mix in some hot water and down the hatch and that's meant to be a great like natural source of iron and bees, specifically 12s. And it's actually what they feed horses. So there's a handy fact for you. Um, you, um, oh, this one, were you spiritual as a child? Were your parents spiritual? Were they into crystals? Obviously anyone that follows me knows I'm really into the moons and crystals and I've done my Reiki course. Um, I love like Palo Santo, that amazing South American version of white sage. And often when I travel, I'll go and do cool spiritual ritually things. To be honest, that's just following something in my heart. 
My parents are so orthodox. My dad is a vet and my mum is a nurse. So they're like full science based. Um, not really into the hippie stuff, although I do sneak them crystals as prezzies. So that when I go to their houses, there's little crystals around now, but it's probably my own selfish gifts that I've given. Um, but no, my background wasn't at all like um, spiritual. I went to a private all girls Catholic school, definitely wasn't a Steiner school kid, although I'm very pro Steiner school for anyone that's watching this and into kind of like, you know, biodynamic living and organic living and all that jazz. My mum was always really health conscious, but um, not so much into the hippie spiritual stuff. Although I'm pretty sure my kids will be because I love living this way. But yeah, no, I've just itself, I've just kind of followed what feels true in my heart. Um, oh, lucky last question. How often do you exercise and what do you do? To be honest, it changes. And to be really honest, I broke my rib three weeks ago. So I've been doing barely nothing. I've been walking most days and like two yoga classes a week. And they're like yin or a really mod heavily modified vinyasa. So, um, but generally I see a trainer twice a week. I love to do a run a week, just a little one, like 3K. And um, I love doing like four yoga classes a week. But at the moment that's really scaled back to like one or two classes a week and walking every day. I'm doing a bit more meditating as well. So yeah, I just go with how I feel and what feels right in my body. And I know that that's gonna change depending on what feels right in my work as well. Cause sometimes work can affect things. But yeah, make exercise work for you. That'd be my number one rule. You know, find what you love and do it and make it part of your lifestyle. Big love, more questions below. Dig your bell, thumbs up, subscribe. Bye.